Welcome back to another episode of the RTS Podcast. I am your host, Zion Smith. On this RTS Podcast, I will be talking about the importance of feeling your emotions. To elaborate more into that topic, I will be explaining the ways that I handle stress. I will also be explaining the ways I try my best to let go of certain situations I cannot control. And I will also explain different emotions we all go through and how we can feel those emotions instead of suppressing our feelings. Let's jump into it. Before I jump into this podcast, I would like to put out a disclaimer. I am not a therapist whatsoever. I am not a mental health expert. These are my experiences And these are some resources that are helping me and that I'm currently learning right now so I can share them to you all. So we got the disclaimer out the way. Let's jump into this podcast. Okay. I'm going to be as well as I can be to the best of my ability. What are some ways I handle stress? I believe one of the ways I handle stress is going to the gym, netting off my emotions at the gym, No matter if I'm in the gym for 30 minutes, 45 minutes, or an hour, or even over an hour, like an hour and 15 minutes. If I'm in the gym doing any kind of exercise, I try my best to stay in the moment, not pay attention to other people in the gym, especially the women, being that I'm a man, We all know how that goes, gentlemen. (laughs) But yeah, I try my best to not pay attention to other people in the gym and just focus on me, focus on what I'm doing in the moment to let off these emotions as I exercise. If I'm doing cardio, if I'm lift weight, if, if I am lifting weights, if I am working on any part of my body, it doesn't matter what it is. I try my best to stay focused, keep my music in my ears, handle the workout, and let off my emotions the best way I can. Just a few days ago, I was in a gym, and believe it or not, I. I had tears in my eyes. I was listening to a powerful song. It's called Cater to You by Destiny's Child. I love that song. And as I was working out, I started to have, I, I start to shed tears in my eyes because the song was so powerful, but because of the emotions I was feeling, 
the week was very tough for me and I had to net it out. So that's one example of me handling this craft. So I also try to do things I love, keeping up with soccer, keeping up the consistency. I've been playing soccer for a long time, since I was eight years old. I try to talk to people I trust. I try to talk to people I love. Talking to people about the experiences that I went through that was very hard for me to handle. And when I talk to those people, like my mom or my dad, my grandpa, my, my grandmother, or even a friend, I listen to their insight, I listen to their opinions. If it's relatable, if it makes sense, it, it makes me feel better. So that's one of the ways that I also handle stress as well by talking to people I love. And also, one of the ways I try my best to get through the days is by writing. I love to write. One of the reasons why I love writing is because it helps me plan ahead. But we're not talking about organization skills, we're talking about feelings and allowing yourself to feel. On my motivational book, I'm making my mission to wake up in the morning, write on my motivational book, and walk out the door. That's one of the first things I do in the morning. If I've been through an experience and I learned from that experience. I write on this motivational book as well. Some things I cannot control. That's what I just wrote on my motivational book. There are some things I cannot control. One of the reasons why I wrote that is because I'm trying my best to understand that the past is the past. I am not in control of the choices that people make. I am not in control of what is going to happen in the future. I am not in control of that whatsoever. But what I can control is myself. What I can control is my thoughts and how I operate in certain situations. I'm going to try my best to keep that in mind. And as I say this, I hope this inspires you and I hope this motivates you to do the same as well. One of the other feelings that I also go through all the time is overthinking. I believe overthinking is good and bad. I said this because I always do it. I always overthink. In the good situations, I 
sometimes overthink about I'm so excited. I know this is going to go well. <laughs> if I'm going to an event, who would I see? The, the excitement gets to me. The adrenaline gets to me. I, I'm, I'm so excited. If it's a bad situation though, I overthink to the max. I, I overthink and I ask myself when I will ever see this person again. We had a good conversation. When would this go well? When would that go well? That didn't quite work out and I want to have another second chance at this or that. I could have done that. I could have done this. I regret doing that. I regret doing this. I know I can control what already happened in the past. And I know I cannot control the future because the future hasn't even happened. But I regret doing that. All these thoughts goes into my head as I overthink. Especially as a college student. The reality of a college student isn't always what you see on a university's website or it, uh, it isn't always what you see on TV. It, it isn't always what you see on social media, it's, it's not. You see people with smiley faces, enjoy themselves at the football games and basketball games, and they also enjoy themselves at these events on campus, and they having a great time. But the reality of a college student is not always that. It's always making sure you are standing on top of your schoolwork because schoolwork is number one in college. And if you don't put that priority as number one, you're not going to succeed, I'm sorry. And handling the schoolwork on top of the extracurricular activities, on top of the clubs, on top of going to events, on top of Stand on contact with family and friends on top of making sure that you are taking care of you, your physical health, mental health, spiritual health, emotional well-being, and financial. It's difficult. All they want, that combines into a bubble. And when that bubble bursts, you lose it. You 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 lose your head. You 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 lose where you at in the moment. You become uncharacteristic. You start to do things that you will normally never do. You start to not be yourself. Those are the realities of a college student. I'm not saying that happens all the time. But it happens every once in a while. So yes, overthinking is a real emotion. And I'm not saying this to say it. I'm saying this because I go through it. And I'm sharing this experience, I'm sharing this emotion because I want each and every one of you to understand this. And if you go through it, if you go through overthinking, and you relate to the things that I'm saying right now, trust me, I feel you. I feel you, girl. I feel you, man. For real, I, th this is Will. Just a few days ago, I went to Canceling the services at ODU. I tried my best to talk to 
a mental health counselor at ODU about the schoolwork becoming overloaded and how to handle that class. She provided me with some resources on campus. She informed me to talk to a peer mentor one-on-one. -on -one. And when she gave me those resources, it was, it was important. And now I'm gonna know that there is numerous amount of resources for mental health. So what I'm saying, I'm saying the mental health is important. You've gone through an experience that's impossible to deal with. I recommend talking to a mental health professional. It's helpful because they help you recognize these emotions and they give you coping strategies to deal with those emotions you're going through. I also recommend this app called BetterHelp. BetterHelp is a therapy app. It allows you to schedule an appointment on your phone, it allows you to pick your own therapist according to your own purposes. Basically, picking the best therapist for you. I recommend BetterHelp. BetterHelp is an app that I'm definitely going to use. And I recommend that you guys use it as well. It's a great resource for mental health. Which brings me to my next point, talking to people I love and trust. That's one of the ways I try to cope with my emotions. If I need insight, if I need somebody to talk to, I reach out to my mom, most likely. If it's not her, it's my dad. If it's not her, it's a couple of close friends that I have. Or, if it's, or even if it's not them, sometimes I talk to faculty and staff at LDU. And I try to be well as possible about how I'm feeling. I don't want to be faint. And I definitely don't want to pretend that everything's okay. And that's what I need. I want to talk about a subject that is highly debatable. If you are watching this RTS podcast right now, I want to make this particular topic a podcast Sunday. Any one of you, if you are listening to this and you are about to listen to this topic that I'm about to discuss right now, if you are interested in becoming a special guest on my podcast, I'm free, I'm open, and you are more than welcome to make an appearance on my podcast. I need special guests. I want to learn from you. I want to challenge you. And I also want to support you as well. So please, if you are interested in becoming a special guest on my podcast, don't hesitate to reach out to me. A subject that is highly debatable is
is it okay for men to cry? In my opinion, yes. I believe it's okay for men to cry. And here's why. Growing up, for as long as I can remember, I always been taught to be a man, stop being soft, stop crying. Stop being a crybaby. Stop whining. Stop complaining. Always been taught that. As I grew older, and as I started to understand the importance of talking to people, I had a mentor when I was 16. And five years later, he's still my mentor today. I still talk to him. During those five years, my dad, he started to understand that it's okay to talk to people. It's, it's, it's okay to express yourself. If you need anything, reach out to me. He always tells me that all the time. I appreciate him for that. I love him for that. But is it okay for men to cry? And yes, I, I believe it is okay for men to cry. And here's why. Women cry. I don't know the number, but they, they cry more than men. That, that's just put it like that. Women cry more than men. Women are more sensitive than men. Men, on the other hand, is insensitive. Women are more reactive. Men, on the other hand, it's proactive. What is what I'm saying? I'm saying that from the very beginning, men were the protectors. They was the breadwinners. They was the providers. Why you think men is let me rephrase that. Why you think the majority of men is believers? Yeah. Why you think the majority of men is police officers? Firefighters. Security guards. Petty matters. majority of men is in the army, the navy, coast guard, air force, marine. The majority of men is in the engineering industry, welding, mechanical engineering, car mechanics, you, you name it. If you think about it, the objects that's built, the, the cars that's built, if a crime has been committed, the majority of men is always there. I'm not saying no women is not there at all, but you rarely see that. So what I'm saying is, from the very 
get-go, men were taught to be the providers, be the protectors, and be the breadwinners. Women, on the other hand, you know, this is centuries ago, this is decades ago, are more reactive, dare I say, housewives, stay at home, cook. They are more the teachers, the, the lawyers, even doctors and nurses. You know, women from the very get-go was taught to nurture and be caring. So what I mean by that is because of those jobs and because of those qualities and those abilities, men the, the majority of men doesn't have time to feel sorry for themselves. They don't have time to be all emotional and stuff like that. Because a woman is supposed to care for them. A woman is supposed to be all emotional and all in her feelings. That was a narrative. Now, in this generation, Gen Z, you have social media, and then you have all kinds of people, men and women, talking about their private life and putting it out on the internet. And with social media, everything is so opinionated nowadays. Everything is hard to say. It's hard to get your point across because people easily get offended nowadays. So, with a man, with all this social media and all this nonsense, it's so easy for a man to get caught up in that nonsense and Going back to the bubble, when the bubble becomes bigger and bigger and bigger and it bursts, the man is not going to know how to react, especially if he's a man that came from a family that wasn't very supportive and didn't come from the best environment. He's gonna know that I have to suppress my feelings because I have nobody to talk to. That's him, that's him. And, and it's gonna be difficult for him to be aware of those resources, those mental health resources I just mentioned. So yeah, it's okay for a man to cry because, listen, at the end of the day, we is all human. We wasn't taught to be a nona. We wasn't taught to be out here and suppress our feelings. We wasn't taught to be out here and at night you are badass and at night you're doing this by yourself and, and you all the known. No, men and women was not taught that at all. We as humans, we have to connect. We, we have to help each other feel. And when we do that, this world will be a better place. I'm Zion Smith, and this is the RTS Podcast. Always and forever.